let's jump into the bass here. This is tracked on an NG3 Dingwall, of course. All the metal bands in the world uses Dingwall. Anyone who has problems with like noises for DIs, this is for you. So let's think about what is a DI, what does it consist of? It consists of notes that have sustained to them from like 700 hertz and down. Above that is literally only short click sounds. But the high end is where you hear noise usually. Uh, if you don't, if it's in the low end, um, this won't help. So this is like a expander. This is like the snare trick uh, everyone uses as well. This triggers off of the high end though, not the low end. So what it does it removes it, it goes like it goes up when the attack of the uh, pick hits but immediately after it goes down so if you would have a bunch of in the background here this would just turn it down uh, and only maintain the uh, the attack of the bass you can hear that And if I put this on, and this can be used for guitars as well. I, I always have it on, regardless if there is noise or not, basically. Then I do some uh, saturation and a lot of EQ. This is like, a, I think I came up with this when tracking bass through my actual... 73 style preamp getting rid of all the 700 boosting some low low end and cranking the high end it gave it this really aggressive sound it's gonna sound ass now but but like going through distortion that that sounds great here's the compressor and the gate. Not really touching that much. That's the DI portion of it. Then we have two channels, sub and grit, standard. This is EQ moves I've made going through the distortions. It might just make sense to have the distortion on. <laughs> Let's do a little loop here. There's all of that sound I'm removing. And this is going through right now is this and this. This is probably the same cab I used for the guitar. Not sure though, so hold your horses. This is heavy saturation, both of them. I'm not using the low band, I'm just using from 145 to 1.2 ish. And I'm removing all the low end, removing some of the high end. Just want the note clarity of this band. And this is like the really high stuff. So that's what we're hearing right now, but this is not all of this distortion actually. Let's see. For once, the for once the bass is not that downtuned because this is too low <laughs> to I guess for the guitars to get down there. But then I'm using this um HM2 style uh distortion. These are the settings. And I'm EQing into it like this and EQ out of it like this. So I'm going to show you with everything and without everything. Let's see. So without any of the EQ, only the distortion. This is 15% blended, so I'm going to do 100. So, and with the EQ before. And 
down with the EQ after. And I blended it in 15%. So it's like not that much, but. As you can hear, I added so much high end on the DI. So I wanted to add, add some thickness back into it. So this is like the thickness thing. So with and without. Cool. Then we have a bunch of EQ that is probably tone match stuff. I remember tone matching my tone that I made for Throne for this as well, because I love that bass tone with all of these EQs. Then soothe. Pro and B. Love this on guitars and bass. If you ever have shrill guitars or like shrill sounding bass and you still want a bright guitar or bass sound, this is a great option to do like compress the high end. It's going to sound not as shrill as before. And then I have this, uh, this is going to make sense on some of the choppy, choppy riffs because it's like high, uh, slow attack, fast release. So every time the bass stops playing and comes in again, it's going to be like, it's going to be like a transient. So that's the distortion. Then we go to my low end. What I do first is this. Uh, I don't do this anymore, but I kind of do a version of it. So that my filters are 55 to 130. And then I'm kind of just uh, from like 80 hertz and up, kind of bringing that down a little bit. Then I'm doing this. This is like a leveler type of plugin. But it's like, I don't know, I don't really understand these settings to be, far, to be fair, so it's kind of not that even, but I'm going to make it more even. Just clipping the shit out of it. And then the same filters. And then a little EQ here. And then leveler again. That's the low end and the grit at the same time here. And then some bus stuff, removing some low end, probably a last minute change. I'm adding this without any of these in. I just like what it does to the low end, but it's super subtle. More gating. Then I have some spread. This is the, I didn't steal hands and settings, but I st stole this idea. So what it is, is uh, the VST loader with a filter 
fil- uh, filtering away low end. Going to uh, doubler, this basic doubler setting here, basic, and then a really short reverb, which is this. So 100%, it's this. And like I had it at 40 or some shit. Just kind of connects connects it with the guitars in the image, I suppose. And we have the kick sidechain. And we have this cool thing, which is... The thing is, I wanted the bass to be even more distorted for some parts. So what I did was, the first thing I did was doing the warm tube and cranked it a lot. But that changed the EQ curve a lot. I want to maintain the same EQ curve. So I did a tone match, which was this. So this is like has the same EQ as the non-distorted one. And just this uh, to maintain. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you the transition here. And I used it in a bunch of places. So yeah, a lot of distortion. So that's like on for the the more extreme parts. So basically that's bass. 